So people are all about the organizing and organizing their stuff, but what happens when other people's stuff starts creeping in and you need to help them? So we talk a lot about organizing stuff, organizing your life on this channel, and there's multiple tips and ideas out there. But what happens when you need to organize someone else's things that are impacting your life and your organization? In today's video, we're gonna talk about how to approach organizing somebody else's closet. In this example, my husband's. It needs some serious TLC, and it has been a bone of contention for us throughout our entire 10 year marriage. So I'm gonna share some tips that I found helpful to get him on board with a plan that could work for both of us. Newsflash, there is compromise. I'm not gonna get everything that I want, but at least it's better and we are discovering systems that work for him and indirectly for me too. If this is your first time seeing me, hello, my name is Julie. I help moms organize their time and schedule their lives so that they can focus on what matters most for them and their family. Don't forget to go ahead and click the subscribe button, click the notification bell. This way you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let's get started. So first tip, know that you cannot change somebody, but you can lovingly and very intentionally provide some suggestions that might make their lives easier. Make sure that you approach them when they're in a good mood, when they're feeling open to it, because likely if they're having trouble organizing a closet, for example, this is probably a pain point in their life as well, and they don't really wanna talk about it or deal with it, especially if it's been going on for a long time. Need I say, we might be going through a pandemic and they've got bigger things on their minds. The other possibility as to why this closet is perpetually messy is that they're not prioritizing it, there's a lot of other stuff going on, they're very busy, or they just don't know how to make it work. So it's just easier to kind of just throw everything in there, hope for the best, and tell everybody else in their life to stay away. And that's the thing. I do need to have respectful boundaries because this is not my closet, but we live in a very small apartment in New York City and his stuff is kind of my stuff. There's certain things that are in his closet that we need as a family sometimes that I need to go and get. But more importantly, my big pain point with all of this was putting away laundry. When I would try and put laundry away in his closet, there's just no space to put it. And so it just ends up piling, 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 piling. And it just drove me bonkers. I just, we would fight about it all the time and it's just, came to a point where I'm like, it's not worth it anymore. This is not worth fighting over. We need to figure this out. You know, in the past, I would try and move things or declutter things or whatever, and that always ended very badly for me <laughs> because he would always say, don't touch my stuff. I know where everything is. Even when I look at it and I'm like, how can you know where anything is? He has an organized mess in his mind. So comment down below if you're someone that doesn't necessarily need everything to be perfectly lined up, but you know where everything is. And if someone comes to mess with your stuff, that's gonna make you see red. I think that's what was happening here. Bonus tip to save your relationship, because I definitely have done this before, probably blocked it out from trauma. Do not throw away anything without permission, unless you are 1000 million percent sure that it is okay to do so. Because you could throw out some receipt or some piece of paper or I don't know, a sock or something that they're like, no, I really needed that for this purpose. But because everything's such a mess, it's just, you just get too, it just gets too much and you just throw it out. That's not probably gonna end well and I'm sure you wouldn't like someone throwing out your stuff without your permission, just speaking from experience. Okay, so you picked your moment, you've both kind of realized that this is an area of difficulty for you in your relationship, and now you need to figure out, well, what's going on here? What's the problem? Uh, so what I recommend, and you know, hold back type A's like me and impatient people like me, who just wanna take everything out and then dump it on the bed and just start putting it back. It requires some planning because likely if you're having this problem for a long time, you've probably already done that method and it hasn't helped. So what I recommend is that you 
audit the area, in this case the closet, so you take a photograph or you really stare at it and you sleep on it for a day or two so that you can start thinking of ideas. You know, inspiration will find you if you open up yourself to it. So you <laughs> take out everything. You, no, you don't do that. So you take a picture and you just kind of discuss ways that you think this could go better. Because likely the person that's using the closet the most is gonna have some good ideas or he's gonna at least, or she is gonna at least be able to say, hey, this doesn't work for me. I find this really annoying. When I wanna find this, I have to like really go through stuff. And that might help just to set the tone of what you're gonna do later on. So you're brainstorming together, maybe you've got a glass of wine, you know, you're discussing how to make this work a little bit better. And then it's also important to self-reflect. So as the person that's living with the person having the trouble with the closet where it bothers me probably more than him, I need to reflect and see, mm, like, how am I contributing to this problem? What am I doing that is making this way worse? And for me, I think pressurizing him, nagging him, all that kind of stuff. I also think indirectly, you know, we've stored some things in his closet so that for, for the whole, for the benefit of the whole family, but things that the kids can't get to think um, important documents or whatever it is. And you know, he doesn't necessarily have to have those in his closet. They're not necessarily just for him, but we, that's kind of where we figured them out. But then that might be causing problems with him having enough space for all his clothes or having a nice organization system. And also by not having those communal things in his closet, that gives me less reason to go in there, which is also not such a bad thing. So if you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know that I like a no buy storage solution. So I would exhaust all the other options in my home before I start bringing in new storage systems, I guess. So yes, it's nice to have the little boxes and baskets and glass plastic containers. We're trying to move away from the plastic, but you know what I mean. Um, but what I try and do is I look around my house and see if there's something else that I could repurpose that would work better in that space. So I always recommend that people shop their own house first before you start introducing new things. Because even though it's wonderful to have boxes and things and containers, they cost money and they also take up space. And if you're not really using them, you're just contributing to the problem. We're trying to thin out the unnecessary things and maximize what we do have. And bonus tip, at least right now, it's hard to go and find boxes and storage and that kind of stuff. It's hard to go and buy things. It also takes time for you to order things online. So it's much better to just use what you have for right now and see if you can make it work. Also kind of gets those creative juices spinning, juicing, you know, which, which is good, makes you smarter. Okay, so you've ruminated on a solution for a couple of days and now you're ready to start decluttering and reorganizing and all that good stuff. So I recommend, like I do with all of my cleaning and organization videos, to remove everything from the shelves, remove everything that you can. In this case, I might leave a few boxes that my husband wants me to leave there because he knows where everything is. But typically, I would remove everything out like I did in my pantry organization video. If you haven't seen that, you can see this whole system in action. And then, this is a great opportunity to vacuum the floor, like especially like all the dust and things that creep in there to take everything out. I guarantee you, you're gonna find something in there that can be thrown out or just cleaned, even if you think that you know everything that's in there. Take everything out. I like to, in this case, lay it out on a bed and just see what's going on. Oh boy, so I have a lot of things. <laughs> Look at all these shoes. Where are they? So I've kind of sorted things into most, I mean, we've been pretty good about decluttering in the past. So a lot of, I don't think Ryan really needs to give away too much stuff, but it's nice to see what's in his cupboard and find some things that I'm sure he didn't know were there. And because it's not my stuff, I have to just check with him what he wants to keep. If there's anything that's obvious that needs to go or that's broken or it's too small or whatever the case may be. Yeah, like shoes that don't fit anymore, whatever the case is. I need to just check with him before obviously discarding them. A tip with that would be to have like, if you don't have the person doing this with you, because sometimes they don't have the time, right? That's the whole problem. Then get a container with your proposed donation pile and set it aside and have them go through it. And it's a lot less overwhelming than if you, they have to go through their whole closet. Something that I also find easier to kind of ease the overwhelming amount of stuff that people have, even if 
they don't think they have a lot, is to choose and put back the things that are definites that definitely need to be there because that might be easier than trying to find things that kind of need to be donated rather you're selecting the things that are in that are in the club and that you really want and that's that's just an easier process i find um, and then you can kind of have like definitely mm, i'm not so sure do i have space let's just see and then like definitely not those kind of piles and i think that really helps so something i'm going to try and do as i try and put all this back together is i think create a to-do list ryan needs some pants that he has kind of but he doesn't they they're not right and so we need to get some more so and i noticed some things need to be fixed some things might need to be replaced so i think i need to write a list of things that need to be done so that we don't forget and when the time comes around that he needs them he has the things that he needs like for work or whatever so that's a good tip because i don't usually plan ahead like that <laughs> also know that you know you have to work with what you have and the cupboard space or the walls they're not changing so see what you can actually change within the closet i feel like there's lots of great ideas on pinterest and on, on the web and everything to get really creative with organizing but remember we're trying not to bring in any more organization systems than we already have so likely you've collected them or at least i have throughout the years so i have things that i can repurpose and every now and again i go through my apartment and i shuffle things around i have this system that i bought such a long time ago which i like because you can move them around easily you can move like this these all come out so i had them all separate before i had like a stack of four and a stack of two and maybe i will try them all like this and we'll see how it goes it kind of creates like a whole new shelf for him so maybe that'll make life easier so definitely do that first but remember obviously you're working with a confined space you're not going to be bashing down walls i don't really want to do a lot of diy the most i'm going to do is maybe stick up a few like command hooks on the walls <sighs> love those i wish they would make a non-plastic version but i love those they're so useful and they're so helpful in this situation because you can move things around they also protect your walls especially if you're renting an apartment but yeah that's about the most diy that i really want to do in this situation i'm also always like time poor and need to do things chop chop so you know i'm working with what i have so we spend a little time brainstorming what works for him what doesn't work how we can kind of display his clothes now that we're going into much warmer season so that really helps because then i can put away all the things that are winter related and just keeping a few essential things in case it's chilly one day kind of thing um, and that'll just help him be able to keep his system fairly organized allow me to put clothes away allow him to put his clothes away and just keep us a little more sane and we can focus on way more important things than where to put his shoes okay wow that took all day but also because i had kids to kind of manage so i want to show you na, 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 the finished product and i think ryan's happy with it which is probably the most important thing and me too <laughs> okay hold on so over here we have some hooks that i just hung up backpacks that he uses a lot uh like a weekend bag to get it off the floor and out the way these ties he needs to go through and kind of thin out because i don't know which ones mean what <laughs> and are valuable his shirts extra hangers all his clothes that we always have problems with because i think i just stuffed too many things on a shelf i have put all his like winter warm stuff over here which he's not going to really use that much anymore jeans another bag up there this bag I need to hang on a hook here, socks, t-shirts, shoes, but I think the main thing and the main lesson is that I rearranged what we had. I haven't, you know, bought anything else. Obviously I did this like in a few hours. Um, I managed to clean the floor a little bit, which is so nice. And now you can like walk into the walk-in closet and you can actually see what's going on. I kind of sort of color coordinated his shirts that's not gonna stay I color coordinated his ties because why not that's gonna st well that could stay because he doesn't need them really now so that's good but yeah I definitely feel like so much better about this hopefully he can maintain it um, and I can help him as well because you know we all need help with certain things I don't really have a huge like donation pile there's like a little bit of stuff on the floor let's see if you can see right over there like the odd thing that I need to just figure out where to go I found some of my socks in his closet it's always good but yeah hopefully now i don't have to declutter for a long long time i mean things always need maintenance but i'm super excited to say ta-ta done 
So if you're someone that doesn't like organizing, that kind of just doesn't want to deal with the clutter and the mess, I hear you. Even though I like organizing, I've definitely been there where you just want to literally shut the door. And by extension, that's what we've done. Like we have our bedroom all nice and organized and then we just shut his closet door, try, you know, and hope for the best. But if you are someone that finds it super overwhelming, I just want to encourage you to think of the bigger picture of why you're even organizing. It's not a academic exercise. It's not futile. It's to provide you a great foundation so that you can find things, you're not wasting time, you're looking after your stuff so that they li live longer, that they last longer. And you know, it's really gonna pay itself back in dividends if you can get yourself organized. I kind of feel that quote is quite apt where it's like your inside chaos is reflected in your environment or what you feel inside is reflected in your outside environment. And I think to be a high functioning, productive person, you need to have some kind of organization in place. It's not gonna be perfect. It's gonna need maintenance. You're probably gonna to need to refresh it just like you would changing clothes in the seasons, but it's well worth having a system that works as a foundation that you can build upon. So don't give up, tackle one small little area. I've left lots of tips in other videos so you can go and look. Something that I like to do is if you don't think you can get through a project in one sitting, make sure you have a box or some kind of container that you can just sort of throw things in and store it out the way until you can get to it. Especially if you have little kids, you can't leave things lying on the ground and stuff like that. They can't be going through that kind of stuff, you yeah? know? You don't want them in your stuff. So that's something just to keep you occupied. I also think if you're watching this video during pandemic 2020 that this is an amazing time to reset and get all this kind of stuff sorted out while we're kind of forced to be at home while we're not doing as much because once the world starts to open up again then you have all these great systems that you've tested and tweaked and that's really awesome if you enjoyed this video which i hope you did i hope it was useful and you found value please don't forget to subscribe click the notification bell give this video a thumbs up let me know what you want me to organize next in the comments down below and I will see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. Bye guys.